Well, today I'll be covering the basics of strings and symbols in Racket. So, I covered in the last video a little bit about them, and they're very interesting. The way a symbol works is it's basically, like in Java, a character, but you can have multiple characters in one, which is a really weird concept at the beginning. So let's say we have a um, color. We could declare a color by blue, like that. So let's run this. After you run this, you can just call blue, and, uh, oops, color, and it returns blue. Which is cool. And, uh, pretty much, it's really useful. And, uh, the really interesting part is that, uh, there's some unique methods for symbols. And the reason you would use symbol is, um, because it's faster than strings. That's pretty much one of the only reasons to use symbol. It has many less, um, many less methods than string, but it's significantly faster. So let's say, for example, um, you can check to see if something is a symbol using the symbol question mark operator. So let's do this in my interaction. So it's a symbol. Hey, is this a symbol? Yep. Now you can check to see if symbols are equal. So symbol equal A and B. It should return false. Now symbol A A should return true. Now the cool thing about this is that um, basically they gen generally follow the out. If the function returns a boolean, it'll probably have a question mark at the end. Now, this is the method, so you just have to see if symbol equals like. Notice the symbol question mark is similar to what I used before for like number one. True. Now that's pretty much it for symbols, but you can also have a string. So let's say uh universe uni university of Waterloo. So that's my university. So uh, I can just type in uni and get that. Now there's a bunch of different things you can do. So let's define like it'll be totally useless, but let's say uh length uni length uni length. Oops. Oh boy. And then uh we can write like uni. Now inside here I can do uh university. And inside here I can actually just return string length of university. Now I could call inside my interactions pane, I can call uni length uni and it will return the length of my university. Basically what it does is it substitutes once it sees uni, it's like, oh, let's head over to this and kind of look up the word uni. It sub then it becomes uni length university. Afterwards, it, it, it goes here and it sticks in university in here, and then it evaluates string length university. And then after it evaluates string length university, it just returns a simplified value of 22. And there's a bunch of different operators. So you can have um, string, substring, hello, 0, 2. And uh, substring. And it looks like I messed up. Okay. Sorry for that. Uh, you can do substring. Hello, 0, 2. And this takes starts at index 0, which would be age. And goes 1, 0, 1, 2. And then you subtract 1. And the reason why it says 2 is because if you want to do the whole string, you can just do the length of the string. And that should be able to do 2. Since you have 2, 3, 4, 5. And you can do that. Now, weird. So my screen recorder just crashed. Pretty awkward. So yeah, this is pretty much, um, substring is a really useful method. You can also do string equals hello and then hi. False. And there's also for ordering of strings. So you can do string less than a, b. And this will do the ASCII value. So is the ASCII value of a less than b? True. So you can use that for ordering. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video on strings and and symbols. And later on, I'll be starting to go over into structures. So that'll be very interesting. And for those of you who know OOP, that'll be an interesting twist on OOP. So I hope you guys will stay tuned and 